Welcome to my garage. My name is Alex. Uh, we're gonna copy a wheel today, I guess I'd call it. It's kind of the easiest way to get into building a bike wheel. I'm gonna show you guys that. I've been riding on this wheel for years and years and years and years. It's a Shimano Nexus 7 speed internally geared hub. A nice hub, not a great hub, a nice hub. The hub's fine. The rim though, I've had a lot of flats lately, probably something in the tire and I've checked it, but all of a sudden the, my wheel got a hop, like every rotation, thump, thump, thump. I thought it was a tire, so I changed the tire. I still had a hop. The rim looked pretty straight on the bike. I got another flat and I was like, yeah, I've had a lot of miles on this rim. I have ridden this rim with my tire flat more times than I'd like to admit. Uh, I think it's just time for a new rim. So, uh, we got a new rim. What you need to pay attention to is the size of the wheel. So this is commonly known as the 700C. It's really confusing the numbers, but 700C. It's your standard road bike kind of setup. The width, this is a little wider rim. The width is not as important if your bike can fit it. Um, the same tires will still fit. Um, but I, it is a wider rim. This is a rim by uh, Velo Orange. They make some really nice stuff. I had to make sure I had the same number of spokes. This is a 32-spoked wheel. Um, kind of wish this one was a 36, but it is what it is. 32 is the most common. Um, if this was, let's say I had just dented this rim in a bike accident or something, something hopefully it didn't get hurt, but the wheel, the rim really got damaged, but it was a relatively new wheel. Uh, we wouldn't necessarily need to change the spokes um, unless they're damaged. Honestly, the spokes can probably be reused, but um, I'm really trying to give this rim a whole new uh, life. So we're just going to change all the spokes and the nipples and build it up. And because of the way we're doing it, we've, I've, I said we're gonna copy a wheel. What that means is I've, I've taped the new rim adjacent to the old one, lined them all up, make sure the uh, air valve hole is at the same spot in each one. And I just taped them around here. And I've got each hole lined up. You, may, you need to pay attention to the fact that the holes may not be dead center in the rim as you go around. Uh, the holes are typically offset uh, because one spoke's going to come from one direction and one spoke's going to come from another direction. So pay attention to that. Um, as far as otherwise we're going to need a few things. Uh, we've got nipples, we've got spokes, spoke wrench. Sometimes it helps to have a modified screwdriver tip that can fit into the back of these nipples. Nipples and spokes is basically just like one long bolt and a nut. It's nothing more complicated than that. This bolt is long and skinny and stretches under tension, but this is just a nut. Now the nipples or the spoke threads, it's helpful to coat them in something. There are specialty products for it. There's old school products like linseed oil today. I just use some sort of anti-seize compound. You need something on there. Don't just put the nipples on dry. Now I've already loosened all of these spokes just by unscrewing these nipples off of here. Again, it's just like a bolt. We're just uh, a nut on a bolt. So just unscrewing it. Now I don't want to start taking them all out because the plan today to make this real easy. This is like a beginner's version of building a wheel. We're going to just swap spokes one by one. Then you don't have to worry about the lacing pattern you just make sure you're swapping them out one by one and it should be hard to mess it up <laughs> it should be hard uh, but typically we start where the air valve is now we can just untwist it from here because it's got so it's a nut and it's got flats on here that the wrench will turn on we can also get to it from the back side with a screwdriver All right. All right, so we've gotten the spoke loose. Now we have to get it out. 
Um, I'm not worried about damaging this spoke uh, because we're removing it. So I don't mind bending it a little to get it out. Now, I need to tell you guys, I skipped all over this. You can't just get any spoke. Spokes come in very specific sizes. Um, not only the, the width, but the length. And that length is determined by what brand hub, what brand inside, what size hub, what size rim, down to very detailed specs. The relative position of the rim right and left to the hub, that's not always balance between the two sides of the hub uh, especially on rear wheels uh, especially on any wheel with a disc brake so the spokes on one side might differ from the spokes on the other side also it depends on the pattern of the lacing this is a standard we call three cross so each spoke as it leaves the hub crosses one two three other spokes before it makes it to the hub excuse me to the rim that's pretty standard. Uh, the whole idea is that these spokes are coming relatively tangential to the uh, hub to give it the most uh, ability to turn the wheel when you apply torque. There are other lacing patterns. You can go two cross, one cross, zero cross, which is called radial lacing. Uh, generally not advised for a real rear wheel. The three cross is the standard. Three cross is what we are going with today. So as I was saying, you need to get very specific length spokes. So how do you figure that out? Uh, you go online, there are, uh, just type in spoke calculator. Um, for this one I used, I believe, uh, Quality Bike Products, QPB. I used their spoke calculator. Um, you drop down, there's a drop down menu, you pick your hub, you pick your rim. You, it may have options to select how many holes it's drilled for. Um, you can select how many spoke crossings you want. Uh, there are more spoke crossings than just 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., but those get kind of specialty. 3 is the standard. Anyway, you punch in those numbers, it will give you specifics, uh, you know, down to tenths of a millimeter. Now, spokes are sold generally in 1 or 2 millimeter differences lengthwise because 1 or 2 millimeters makes a significant difference. You have to have the right spokes, give or take 1 or 2 millimeters, otherwise it's just going to be a lot harder. So, we've got our new spoke in. I put it on this little tool I've made from an old screwdriver. Pop the new nipple through. Get that on. And now we need to tighten it up a little, just a little. Um, we just want to engage some of the threads so it stays on. We don't need to go further. All right, I'm gonna repeat that over and over and over. Uh, if you wanna kinda go in a pattern where you're doing the same, that's probably an easier way to do it. So the way this spoke goes, comes out from this here. If we wanna do that same direction, not this one or this one, but this one, which copies the same positioning, we might get a little more practice doing that. We can skip to every fourth spoke. Um, by the way, I, you definitely do want to detension the whole thing fairly uniformly. Um, you wouldn't want to be trying to swap this, all of these spokes on a fully tensioned rim. Um, yes, detension the whole thing before trying to rebuild it. Alright, so we go under, under. Again, one, so one, two, three, four. The same one, same pattern. If you really wanted to start easier, you'd probably start on the non-drive side. That is the side away from the gears. Um, that can make it really tricky to swap spokes on a rear wheel. Uh, often you have to remove uh, the gear or cassette or free wheel depending on what's there. Um, and that can be trickier. Sometimes it needs a special tool. Uh, we don't need to remove that on this one. I can 
sneak these spokes out pretty easily. If you're looking to get into building bike wheels, or at least try it, uh, this is a really easy way because, again, it's you just follow the pattern. Don't try to do anything different. You're just copying it. You're just replacing parts. Uh, just keep the tension off of, you know, keep the tension low until you're done. Or, you know, we've got all of them, and then we can start evenly tensioning it. And that's important. We'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, you want to tension them all evenly. We haven't talked about the special, the really special tool today that we're using. Of course, this is a, a standard wheel truing stand. There's lots of different types. Um, there, I mean, they're basic, but a lot of different companies make them. This is a standard park one. This is kind of a, a more industrial one. Um, I mean, I've had it 20 something years. It does great. It's not necessary. If all you want to do is what I'm doing, copying a wheel over, uh, you could flip your bike upside down loosen the brakes use the bike frame and the brakes essentially to act as a truing stand uh, no reason you can't do that but of course if you got a nice tool use it in fact this step there's no reason that's to be done this could be done in your lap once you've got the uh, rims tied together uh, taped together as I've done with some electrical tape yeah, this could be done in your lap. Uh, the little bit of blue painter's tape I put on here was really just to help, I think, illustrate things for YouTube purposes, but I think it's really helping to keep track of what we've done. Of course, it's a bit of a tedious process. Just gotta go one spoke at a time. I am using DT Twist Champion Spokes. Um, just really nice straight gauge stainless steel spokes. You can't go wrong with these either. Don't go too cheap with your spokes. It's the spokes that make the bike wheel work. Everything else is just along for the ride. All right, so every single spoke on this side of the hub is now on the new rim and all the spokes on the other flange are still on the old rim. So we're halfway done. Well, halfway done the lacing part. So you want to keep your eye out for asymmetries and things that look great. Like I've got two spokes here. 
so I'm swapping spokes from one rim to the other. Yet I've got two spokes at this spot. This new one I think is supposed to be right here. So catching those early is helpful. At this stage, don't be too concerned about spoke tension being all wild and some spokes, even though you haven't tightened everything up, some spokes being tight and some being loose. It has a lot, the rim can still move around a lot right now. All we gotta do is make sure we're putting the right spoke in the right hole in the right pattern. Tensioning is a whole separate thing that we'll do after we get everything in the right place. All right, we have successfully swapped one rim for another. All the spokes now are on the new rim. Uh, so let's cut it free. Now, it should be pretty obvious we are nowhere close to a functional wheel. The spokes are all loose, but what we want to do before you start, take your time, look it over, make sure all of the spoke crosses are the same. Make sure which spoke is going over the other is the same. It's easy to get that messed up and confused, and now is a really good time to try to find that before we tension everything. I think we're pretty good. Now, we want to tension things evenly, but we still have a long way to go. There are a couple ways to deal with that. The simplest, and I don't know how well you could see this down here or not. All right, if we look really close here at the nipple, this part of the nipple that has the square flats that you can use on, this doesn't have any threads. So it can come up over these threads that you can see here, and it can come up past that. In fact, to be a proper tension, it will be past that. So if we want to get every spoke to starting with the same tension, one easy way is to just visually do it until you don't see any threads anymore. Just do it till it's right there. That's a simple way. There are other ways. You can use a screwdriver, such like this that I've modified. Just a normal flathead, but you can see I've notched it so that it'll tend to engage in that nipple and the little notch will stay where the spoke comes and eventually when the more you tighten this down, that spoke, end of that spoke will poke through that hole and push this out and so also reach a similar stopping point. And so you go around slowly tightening them all the way till they're all approximately the same. You want to start from the same base. And that's important. All right, we've done a first pass, and we've got all the spokes to about the same spot. But we still clearly need a lot more tension. It's going to start increasing quickly. At this point, you really want to pay attention to where you are on the wheel, either by noting the hole that's been drilled for the valve, or on the other side, the seam where the rim is, rim is made as one piece of metal that's bent in a loop. 
and there's a seam over here. Whether that or the valve hole, the valve hole is usually easier to keep track of. We're going to use that as a reference. And so when we go around, we chew all 32 until we come to that spot again. So what we need to do now is start getting some more tension. Presumably each spoke is, each nipple is on each spoke to within a millimeter or more. So let's tighten it up. Uh, one way is just get your wrench on here and do a couple uh, full revolutions. And uh, getting the idea, as long as you're being symmetrical about it, we're going to get each spoke about the same. Don't hurry this part. Um, sure, you could snug up each spoke a bunch um, and get them almost a final tension right away. That's not going to be that helpful. Uh, I should note too, I'm not paying a ton of attention. I'm getting it close. I'm doing uh, two or three revolutions. I can feel some spokes starting to get a little bit of tension. The ones I haven't even gotten to yet are going to get tighter as the ones opposite of that get tighter. So adjusting some really puts tension in all the wheels. The key is even tension. All the spokes should be somewhat similar in fact generally as close as they can be now the right side versus the left side may have different tension it depends on the symmetry of the hub many especially rear hubs are not perfectly symmetrical there is some what we call dish that is the rim may not be centered on the hub the rim may be this way or this way and that creates changes in the lengths of the spokes as well as the tension that those spokes have. So don't be worried when you got one side, all the spokes are tighter than the other side. That's off, if it's a rear wheel especially, that's often how it's supposed to be. All right, we're back. Let's keep doing it. trying to do about two full rotations. Once you understand the fundamentals of how a wire spoked bicycle wheel works, then you can start playing with those variables. As I mentioned, the rim doesn't have to be centered around the hub. You can dish a wheel to be moved one way or another. I've done that. I have a table over my shoulder that's made from a bike wheel that um, has dish uh, so that the glass can sit above the hub on one side. Now, using my little modified driver, so you can see that. Again, it's just a flat head, but I've ground off the sides so the middle fits in the back of this, the uh, nipple. And as the spoke gets driven onto the nipple, at some point, the spoke starts pushing out the back side of the nipple, and that'll push this driver out. So that's another way to get these all to the same relative tension, or relative position, I should say. 
because this is nothing with tension this is just physically running out of threads and when we get there we're pretty close to final tension You can just tell by sound that everything is getting a lot tighter. We're getting a lot more tension now. Again, the goal is to get even tension. And to that end, right now, we're just working on getting even uh, positioning of our nipple on the spokes. Up until this point, honestly, you could still be doing this in your lap. This does not have to be done on a chewing stand or any other holder yet. All right, so we've gone all around. We've got a decent wheel start. We've got some tension. It's far more rigid than it was. Nowhere close to being done with the wheel. So now is where the technique crosses with some artistry and some skill to turn this into a wheel. We want to keep it straight right and left. We need some even tension, but we also don't want it to develop a hop. Right now everything's just by feel. You can just by sound and tension everything's certainly needs to go more. So Again, assuming the spokes are all relatively even tension, now we're going to start paying a lot more attention to where we're at. So, 360 degree turn, 360 degree turn, 360 degree turn, 360 degree turn. Again, trying to tighten it. For the first time, it should be getting a lot harder to twist the nipple on the spoke. We've gotten to the seam, so this round we're halfway around. So we made it back to the hole. You know, we've got a pretty straight wheel. We haven't tried that hard yet. Tension is definitely ramping up. But we should talk about that tension. If you go down this rabbit hole far enough on the internet, there's a lot even tension ways to check it well you can you can hit it that's not a bad way to check I mean you can see there that there's differences that's one way it's easy to get carried away with that and mess things up because you're trying too far too hard um, just feeling it, you know, just general tension. It's feel one less than another. But then there are tools and there are methods and that's what I'm going to be using today. But where I'm not at that step yet. We're getting real close. We've got it straight. We definitely need to tighten more. So we're going to come back to the hole. This time we're going to go about 180 degree turn. But also, I'm backing off just a hair. When we're getting so tight now that as we tighten these nuts on here, we're going to twist the spoke a little. Uh, there are some spokes that are flat bladed and those those you can really, well you can see the twist. Um, here we're going to twist tighter 180 degrees and then back just a hair, just to get rid of any twist. 
Uh, if you don't do that when you're done, you're going to hear all kinds of... Well, you're still going to hear all kinds of popping and pinging when you first put some weight on the wheel. Drop a spoke wrench. Drop my spoke wrench. Drop a spoke wrench. Don't lose your spot. It's real key. Again, you can just hear. Much higher tension. I haven't been paying any attention to this part of the truing stand, which is designed to help straighten the rim, but we're not far off. Now, back to dish. If you notice, a good bit of space over here, not so much over here. If you're doing this in your bike frame, or any other tool from that, even cord, just flip it over, and you'll see. And if it's off again, yeah, clearly, this needs to go that way. So to make that happen, what we're going to do is we're going to start adjusting all the spokes on this side only. We're going to start adding tension. We're going to do half a turn to that side of the wheel. I'm just going to move the whole rim over. So, we're getting more centered, but I think we're going to do that again. Again. That side, we want to pull that way, so we're going to tighten those. Half a turn. I'd rather go through multiple times doing half a turn than just a few times doing a full turn. Because once you start getting this tight, you just do, do smaller adjustments. You know, half a turn on, every, on half of the spokes is not nothing. So initially I'm looking for just outliers with the sound. So truing a wheel is all about that space right here. Adjusting this little arm and that little gap so that you know, same thing on this side. You want that gap to be consistent. rubbing right here so I'm going to tighten these spokes to pull the rim that direction
This is a tensiometer from Wheelsmith. A spoke tension meter is not necessary. Very helpful. Oh, we'll put this on the spoke. And we're gonna get over here, we're gonna read around 60. Do that same spoke over here. Yeah, 80. Still need to dish the whole way over. So again, we're gonna go all the way to start. We'll do half a turn. It should be getting difficult. Half a turn and back it off a tiny bit to untwist. Now tightening one side is going to tighten the other as well. Now, don't be afraid. Grab a handful of spoke, pull hard, squeeze. Get them to set in a little bit. All right, so we've gotten it screwed up. And now, you can see that robot's less than a millimeter. Engage both sides. Try to, there we go. So if it's hitting if it's hitting here, we're gonna tighten the spoke from the other side. That's pretty good. All right, wheels done, copied.